My name is Kimmo Alaujala, and I'm lead technical artist at Hausmark. The studio is located in Helsinki, Finland. I've been there for 19 years in the studio. I started as a 3D artist, but scripts and tools came along since Super Stardust HD on PlayStation 3 that was launched in 2007. So about the Returnal. The game was built out of separate rooms, and each time the player starts a cycle, the rooms were randomly connected. This required us to make a lot of varied rooms. We are not that big of a company, so we decided heavily to automate the art content creation process. Our previous pipelines used Maya, and they were mainly Python-based. So the only way to extend those further was that I would need to learn C++, which is hard. Easy option was Houdini. I ha it had the VX language, which was similar to HLSL sharing language, and I knew that before. <clears throat> For Returnal, we chose Unreal 4 as our game engine. We tested its built-in Houdini engine, but it had few issues. It didn't hide the tool's complexity from the users, required frequent update on the node U assets. This was problematic as our scripts were in constant flux. Other option was, that, was to use the command line Houdini. We could do completely custom user interface, easier to add new features. But this approach would require a lot of more work, and it might not be as fast as the built-in engine. So let's look how we did it. Here we have example of one of our rooms imported with our command line approach. Gray meshes are hand-placed assets that can be reused in multiple rooms. Other meshes are unique to each room around and are generated by Houdini scripts. These are called polytools. Polytools are actors in Unreal. They have a drop-down for scripts and button to run the selected script. The basic polytool type here has an editable 2D shape and a height value for extrusion. One variant polytool type was context polytool. It was basically the same, but it extracted also the surrounding scene. This accepted also, also the Unreal landscape as an input. Third polytool type was post-process. This extracted only the surrounding scene and usually made only additive processing, spawned foliages, and so on. So let's go through the order how our command line script worked. Once user or server machine triggers a Houdini generation, the base mesh is extracted from Unreal and saved in our custom JSON format. The Unreal starts home command line Houdini, Python exe. Chosen Python script is run in Houdini and Houdini builds the needed node structure. Then Houdini assigns the JSON file for our import node. Next, the geometry is cooked. Then the output is saved again in our JSON format. And finally, Unreal reads the JSON file and builds the resulting mesh. Users were able to run the scripts locally in the editor, and we also had server machines crunching the scripts almost daily. We had three basic script types, rocks, ruins, and constructs. We'll go through the following examples. Hidden pre-scene script, the green actor with the rock script, the tiny red actor with the ruin stair script, and then a ruin script with modifiers, yellow actor with context landscape script, and finally the global mask and a few basic post-process scripts. Uh, so before any actual script is run, Unreal runs automatically this hidden script. It extracts all the player collisions in the scene. The purpose of this script is to store the locations of platforms for later polytool usage. Platforms are recognized based on used script on the collisions. Used script information is one of the custom data that our JSON format provides. Results are saved in Houdini's own BGO file format as a point cloud. At the beginning of Retorno, we did not have this, and users needed to select specific scripts based on where they were used. And we tried optimizing messages further away after they were created. <clears throat> then the first example. 
So in the beginning of rock script, the extruded 3D shape is imported to Houdini. Then Vorono is split based on the pre seen point cloud areas more close to platforms are split to smaller pieces. In the next step, we stack pre-modeled meshes to Voronoi cells, also push and modify them a bit to fit the bounds. Red meshes are highest quality and the lowest quality is fully procedural. At this stage, we also delete all internal hidden tri triangles. As the first LOD has lots of intersecting triangles and we can't easily reduce further, we needed to create all the LODs in Houdini. So in this stage, we create a cleaner source mesh for upcoming other LODs. All the LODs will be created later. <clears throat> in the Polito's final step, we create convex hull collisions for bullets, physical materials, and player foot IK. We also create this watertight distance field source mesh as, a, as all other meshes might have holes. And the results in Unreal. A bit dark there, but. Next example. In Ruin script, we do the same first steps as the Rock script, except the middle part. We don't do the Voronoi splitting, it's basically fitting boxes to the base mesh. This time the mesh doesn't get optimized on it as it's treated as a platform. And again, we fill the block out shapes with pre-modeled meshes. And here are the same final steps. And results in Unreal. Now we look at what are modifiers. Modifiers are fixed shapes that are placed in, as components into the Unreal, Unreal actors. These had different kind of operations which users could choose. Mostly used ones were destruct, subtractive, and additive. Red modifier here is, here is using subtractive op operation, a green one is using destruct. In the previous picture, all the messages were just imported. Here the modifiers are already processed. Red mesh has subtracted a portion away from the base mesh, and the green one has marked a portion of the base mesh as destructive. And here the normal script steps are done. Gray portion is the same stacked pre-modeled meshes as before, as before. New things are the fully procedural green rebars, which are the destruct part, and the red portion being the blend between the areas and the results in Unreal. Then our context script. Yellow portion here is the Unreal landscape as an input mesh. Only opaque triangles were imported. Users could easily just paint opacity and create holes. Gray portion is the surrounding scene, but only up to five meters as no more is needed. Then we rebuilt the input mesh with our fixed density and we had this automatic additional shaping. Areas that were further away from the surrounding scene were smoothly pushed down. We also generated player collision at this stage, but not the visual messes, final visuals. And the results in Unreal, but with, but with temporary materials and not the final mess. Then we look into the heaviest possible skip. Global mass script imported all the visuals and collision meshes, but this process, post process did so much more than just additive work. It also edited each polytool in the scene. You could say it finalized them. For all polytools, it created the final LODs from the LOD source mesh that was done in polytool phase and calculated ambient occlusion mass for vertex colors. For platform and landscape script, we added also vertex displacement based on the occlusion and built the final meshes. Global mass script also created the following. Level minimap based on the collision meshes, location for light probes as we used our custom GI solution. Majority of nav leaks also came from Houdini and some biome specific structures. And global mask 
assigned the final platform and landscape materials also. Then let's look at some basic post-process scripts. Post-processes usually imported only the visual messages from the room. They did not import messages made of in other processes, so their generation order did not matter. Usual post-process types were vines, foliages, rock debris, wires, pipes, and clothes strips. And some thoughts of how well things went in the end. Let's start with the bad sides. We had lots of unique messes. This meant a heavy toll on size of data on the disk. In the end, we needed heavy, to heavily optimize mesh base, meshes based on the distance to platforms. Meshes were tightly glued to the place. You could not remove them or you created holes. Then the good sides. Basically, half of all the messes on each room were generated in this way. Fixing bugs propagated quick, quickly as the same script was used in multiple places. Global occlusion masks glued meshes together in a good way. The script types brought us a constant, constant clear art style. We were able to heavily optimize meshes based on the distance to platforms, and we got plenty of fully automatic things. In the picture, you can see the distribution of meshes diff in different qualities. Red landscape in the middle, other red highest quality meshes surrounding it, then yellow middle quality meshes next to those, and the green fully procedural meshes on the edges. In the end, we were very new to Houdini, and we could not find the best approaches right away. That caused uh, that our scripts were quite slow. Of course, we were building the whole assets here, but an average script took like one to 15 minutes to run. Global max up to an hour. Generating a whole single scene could take up to two hours. This created wait times for the users if they decided to run the scripts locally. Also, memory usage became a problem. On biggest levels, the global mass script cooking needed to split in up on separate Houdini sessions. And for last words, I would like to say that Houdini was an excellent choice. Returnal would have been Returnal would have been very different looking game without it. Next time we should definitely do less unique messes and the precinct system worked perfectly. One more thing that we are still continuing this Houdini pipeline, just tweaking it to be better. Thank you.